Good morning, everybody. Looks like we're dark because of that light. Let's see what we can do. Good morning, everybody. Let's see what we can do. Let's do like this, Mom. Yeah. Should we do like that? That's a little sure. bit better. Is that better? Here we are this morning. You can see I'm with the mama. I block the light with my with my bulk. Let's see who's here. Happy Christmas Eve, everybody. We're gonna get a weird quality. We knew there was a light behind us. We just thought it would look atmospheric. Feric. And and maybe it will. Good Let's one. see. Let's see what happens. Good morning, Joelle. You're sneaking in some coffee time. I know you have company. Oh, and your daughter's in town for a Christmas visit. That's great. And let me do like this. Maybe this will help us a little bit. So I can see you better. And Cynthia, good morning. Oh, your husband just left to go shopping. That leaves you alone in the house, right? That's a good state of affairs. <laughs> That's great. Good morning, Donna. Merry Christmas to you, too. Oh, Mary, uh, Christine M. Good morning, everyone. Tuning your harp. Oh my gosh, really? You really? I thought that was like a metaphor. You're really tuning your harp, and you're gonna do. Oh my gosh, that's so nice. I wish we could hear that. Really windy in Brockport. Yeah, I'm a bit worried because um, at least the forecast here in uh, southern New England is like a giant storm, right? Yeah. Um, like a crazy, not a snowstorm as one would expect. Big uh, yeah, a big rainstorm. I think that's as good as it gets, right? We're not going to get any uh, buttons. Little body will block the light. We're going to do mostly talking and fooling around anyway. But we're, we're scheduled to get like a perfect storm of rain, um, which would be bad on Christmas Eve because there's a lot of snow on the ground and there's a lot of snow on the trees and stuff is heavy. The winds, um, they said, are going to go up to 70 miles an hour. So... That's quite bad, and it's not cold enough to snow, so it will be hammering rain. Hey, Ted, from Socrates. Remember, Socrates is where the garlic festival garlic was. Festival. Garlic that festival. Is so good. We God, loved I that. I know. Yeah. That was such a loss this year to not be able to go get the garlic. I miss it so much. Because they had that very hot, spicy, spicy garlic. Oh, it was like so almost impossible to call it crazy. Yeah. That you never see in the market. Crazy. Never heard yeah. of it. Never saw it. It was just really um, intense. And there was a lot of vendors. We did a lot of our Christmas shopping last year in Socrates, remember? Yeah. Let's do, let's do so. Oh, that was nothing. That was nothing. Oh, <laughs> uh, I think that, that's going to be as good as it gets. So that's all right. We'll make it work. Um, oh, good morning from Maryland. J.K. Cantler. Good morning from Maryland. Good morning, Linda. Catherine came on in Arizona. Good morning. Merry Christmas Eve to those who celebrate, to everybody else. Just happy morning, right? Good morning, Cynthia. Oh, Heather logged on too. Okay, great. So it's Christmas Eve. It's Christmas Eve. I can't believe it. We, what happened to the time? I know. You would think it would have been the most protracted, miserable, miserable year. long December. Because of all, all no. things. Um, but it actually went by as a flash. Just what Graham used to say. As soon as you hit Halloween, Halloween. it's like a the landslide yeah. Yeah, to New Year. To New and year. then all of a sudden, it's the next year. And um, yeah. You're all jumbled up and have crazy mixed feelings and are, are crazy, are, are properly crazy. So speaking of crazy, um, I meant to be um, finishing up my Walderboro uh, segment here. And as you can see, I came to my mom's house to celebrate and I did not bring my Walderboro books. But that is not going to stop us from doing a Walderboro segment. We are still going to do it. Uh, with the help of Buttons the dog. Tad, this looks familiar, right? <laughs> Tad has a Yorkie too that looks like oh, almost exactly the same. Gotta be in the picture. <laughs> Gotta be in the picture, yeah. Let's see, go. Linda B. Okay, great. Thank you so much for letting me know. I forgot to ask. That's important. Sharon, Merry Christmas Eve. You too. So listen, um, business, the bingo cards, they have been available for a few days, but they're being sent out this morning. Uh, as usual, it took a little bit of time. And for those of you who haven't done bingo with us before, we are doing bingo. We're going to run it. Oh, thanks, Christine. She says, love you too. You're so cute together. <laughs> um, um, we are going to be doing bingo on Christmas night, assuming we don't get 70 mile an hour winds that knock the power out. It's predicted word of mouth people saying we're going to lose power for days because the storm is uh, so severe but let's see what happens if i'm not on tomorrow and i'm not communicating i hope it's not because i'm laying on the floor and my head is hanging on by a thread i hope it's because of the storm and i didn't think i'd say that but i hope there's no storm but, good. but if there's a problem hello carol um if there's a problem it's because there's a storm and i don't have any anything 
but let's assume that we are going to be lucky as we usually are with the important things and we're going to run bingo tomorrow and for those of you that haven't played bingo with us before this will be our third bingo game right wow. The first one was like uh, general rug hooking history. The second one was Molly and I, Toby. And this one falling on the evening of Christmas, not tonight, tomorrow night, the evening of Christmas, Friday night for our cocktail night slot starting at 7 p.m. It will run over, certainly. Um, we're going to do bingo and we play blackout bingo and people buy cards on ribboncandyhooking.com. That's my site. And um, the cards are $3 each. And whatever the total of the cards uh, becomes, a cruise that is spent. I don't take any cut at all. It's all divided by the amount of people who play. And then however many wins uh, we have, we divide that. And I obviously cannot give you cash. That would be proper gambling, right? That would be probably frowned upon. Mm -hmm. um, but you get a gift certificate to the store and you buy anything you want. Even if you just want white door wool or something like that, you can buy that with me. Um, or yarn, dyed, undyed, whatever you want. Whatever you want if you're a winner. And if you are not, if you get a card and you're not able to play on Saturday, Friday night, because you are celebrating Christmas with your family or you're doing something else, just know that I will know who has those cards. I will know who has issued cards number one through number 12. And if you won while you were doing something else, I will certainly notify you and let you know that you have a gift certificate and give you your code to spend the gift certificate. So you know that for sure. Even if you aren't able to play along, you are still able to participate. Now, Heather just said every Eversource, that's our energy company here, has told all employees that they have to work on Christmas. Oh, isn't that rotten? Oh, that's rotten. That's rotten. But I guess with this big storm coming, it's like it's just it's just one more of the greatest hits of 2020, right? It's Endless. like the gold, the gold album. Oh, one more week after that. Oh, Betty, good morning. Merry Christmas to you and your mom, Betty says. Chrissy, Merry Christmas. So a lot of people logged on today. So listen, this is what the theme is this year. I said it and I'll remind you in case you haven't been tuned in. This is our bingo card. There's uh, 12 different cards. This one has jam sandwich in the middle. That's that little character that Jocelyn, my daughter, has drawn and has become like a I mean, so many people have hooked him, not as Santa, but as just jam sandwich. And so he's the free center space. Now, this is one of 12 cards. A lot of people sent me images of cards that they had. Heather, you sent some that your grandmother had made wow. in the middle 1950s. Wow. So all the all the rugs, if you sent me a rug on Facebook or on Ribbon Candy Hooking, it's too late now because the cards are done. But if you sent me a rug next time, if you sent me a rug, it's going to be part of the cards. I don't know if it'll be on the card that you get, but it will be part of our game. And otherwise, I picked a, a rug from each year. And when I call bingo, I will call, for example, the year 1952. And I will tell you, this is musical bingo. I will tell you, or let you guess first, what the most popular holiday song was that year. So it's like a trip back in time uh, through all the great holiday music. It's not all great, is it? There's some really bad, bad ones. ones. Oh. What's our least favorite we, one? We promise not to sing them. No. Well, no, we may sing them. It might happen because we'll have... Oh, we'll be Grandma like, got run over by the... Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the worst one of all time. It has to be Grandma got run over, over by, by the reindeer. reindeer. Yeah. Um, but Tomo, my brother-in-law downstairs, maintains that even worse than that are anything that the chipmunks sang on their Christmas yes. album. Yeah. You know, it's the arrangements are wonderful, but it's the actual voices it's that make you want to... Stab your eyes out, punch, punch someone. Yeah. So we'll play like that. It's musical bingo and you will see a rug from the year. Somebody sent me this one. I remember this. This is from 2020, this beautiful weather vane. So if you end up getting a card, they're $3 each. You can get as many as you want. If you get multiple, you will be sent all different ones. You will not be sent repeats, all different ones. And if, if you feel that you can play multiple cards at one time, good for you. You should do it. Um, and then we'll have fun marking them off and we play blackout. So you have to get the whole card blacked out. Otherwise the game's over in five minutes. So don't forget to get your bingo cards. Did you get your bingo card? I didn't. Right <laughs> after this, I'm on. <laughs> she got all I'm nervous. On. I didn't know they were available yet. Yeah. yeah. They've been up there for a few days. It's okay. just, I haven't been ready to email them because of the other craziness. So other business I want to catch up on. Uh oh, here comes a little you match want to girl. Say hi? Come, Come on, on, little match girl. Come see. We haven't brushed our hair yet, but who cares, right? <laughs> Who cares? She's still Who got cares? her. She's still got her Halloween shirt on, or her Halloween hooker shirt on. <laughs> You're gonna pull yourself together. You're a hot mess, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We're gonna go it's out right. and do a couple little errands, right? Here, yeah, you gonna sit Santa down? It's Jam Sandwich. <laughs> so I'm just gonna show you this in case the picture is better today. Hello, Donna. Hello, Doreen. Hello, Christine M. Oh, you still have to use your gift certificate from your last win. 
Well, you can hopefully roll them together and have two wins and you have twice as much stuff. to spend. Yeah. So in case the picture is better, I'm going to be working. No, it's not better. Never mind. I'm going to be working on the. Um, How can you tell? Well, because I can see it's going. The light's going right through it. There's like an oh. Amish, a couple of Amish style uh, skaters in the middle. And then there's a giant um, uh, log cabin quilt around the edge, all to be hooked. I will show you that another time. But you know what? I felt so bad yesterday. Um, I was saying in our live Zoom chat, I was feeling bad because I'd said, you know, I'm not going to be doing the monthly. Um, good job, Joss. You want to knock some more stuff down, baby? Um, I'm not going to be. I said I'm not going to be doing the monthly thing anymore, the small one for beginners because 10 by 10 is too small and it's not worth it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I felt bad about that. And I immediately started hooking a beginner kit for January. So I take it back. Um, this year, because I've already done a full year of beginner kits that were $45 each and will remain $45 each, always tons of wool in them, uh, lots to play with, summer yarn, summer wool strips, summer fives, smaller, summer primitive eights, but they're all in the ribbon candy hooking store. And I will do one beginner kit for each month this year, but they will all be primitives this year, just to keep my mind busy and active. Um, I'm going to keep them all primitives. So the first one I did, let me get my uh, nanny, my needle nanny off is this one. So this one will be coming out soon. It's really hard to see, even though we got great light. There we go. Yeah. It's like, um, uh, tomato pin cushion. Let me see if I can show you the bling. Can't really see the bling. I hooked. That's incredible that you can't see the bling. There we go. I hooked with a metallic felt back metallic, me um, pins like stick cushion pins and on the heads of them, you probably can't see. I'll take a photo. There's different colors, like they're actual pins. Oh, good. She knocked down my water. All right. No, yeah. Honest. At least it's water. Yeah. She knocked it down. I was like, either the dog peed on my foot, which doesn't oh. happen. Anyway, this is a tomato pin cushion. Really bad light. I'm sorry about that. But it's going to be a great pattern for beginners. And it's primitive. It's got a very busy, multi background. I have a feeling it's not going to be a great color day. We have lots of um, greens and I'm going to do one of those clover type leaves around the perimeter in pink, just as a joke, because they almost look like hearts, you know? Um, so I'm going to do one in pink and the rest in the greens. And then I had, um, I got the blues for the background, lots of different kinds of blues. And for people who are true beginners, um, you know, it's nice to do, it's nice to do a primitive. It's wide. Uh, it's a nice wide strip. It goes fast um, it's nice using these traditional sort of rug hooking colors for, for mom. For my <laughs> it's just water. And then the thing for this piece that I haven't got to yet is around the edge of the design on the outside here, right on the far side, this side is all like light blues and such. And on the far side, on the outline here, I'm going to punch it with a crazy amount of plaids. So Again, if you're new to rug hooking, we are not getting good light, ironically, because there's lots of light. But um, yeah, it is a problem for glare. Well, I'll take pictures for the Facebook group, but the background border is going to be um, a bunch of plaids. And these are like Christmas type plaids. And if you're a beginner, you probably don't know this yet, but it's great finding plaids um, in thrift stores and things like that. The glare just doesn't go, does it? Um, it's great finding plaid, but it can be tricky hooking with plaids or any sort of recycled stuff. Do you want to transition over there? It's up to you because then that's like, yeah, you know what? Let me do that. Here, come with me. Hopefully we don't lose and I'll it. come back over to you, mom. No, that's okay. I can get yeah. a chair for you aside. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'm going to bring the plaids. Hang in there. I think that's better. better. Yeah. Let me come back here. Yeah. This We should have done this to better. start with. Sorry. Figuring it out. Uh, tomato. Does that look better? That looks better. And you can see I blinged out those little metallic strippies and there's like a little stick pin on the top of each one. Uh, and here are the plaids. I only pulled the plaids that were kind of um, the traditional sort of black watchy plaids. Some light ones that have been, if you can see over dyed a little bit, that's a fun thing to do when you get into your dyeing. Uh, and then some that are sort of more pinky. Good, good, good. And more traditional, I cut this one, I cut it out of a panel from a skirt yesterday. So I'm going to have to, it's real thin. And what I was going to say is if you're a beginner and you're not used to using plaids, um, they can be a real bear to hook because they little shreds, little thready, stringy shreds want to come out. And it's like, it is what it is. If you enjoy using beautiful traditional materials like plaids, you will have to deal with the possibility of getting a lot of little thready shreds on the top. But hey, that's what scissors are for, right? You get the effect that you want. 
Uh, and then you have to trim it out a little bit. But yeah, I'm real happy about this. I'm real happy about this. I'm going to show you. Can you grab that bag, Wolf? Yep. Got to give the wolf uh, work in overtime. Mask. I don't want to bring it out. No, no, no wolf mask. No wolf mask. We'll save that for Halloween. I just want to show you this in case you're interested. Um, I used these in the January kit last year. This is what I'm calling. It's metallic. It's like a metallic material, like a foil, but it's felt on the back, right? So this is what it is. It comes in patterns too. It comes in lots and lots of colors. It's metallic and the back is felt, proper felt. Now, I'm not saying it's the best thing to do, but I have been running this stuff through my Bliss um, cutter all year, and it hasn't hasn't done anything to the blades. Um, Man-made synthetic sort of materials will, but this has not. So it's been really good. What's on my necklace? Oh, what's on um, Wolf's necklace? What's no on your necklace? No, Wolf. Is this? Okay. Um, yeah, I was going to say, have you got a necklace on? No. Yeah. Oh, it's just something horrible I crocheted back in the day while I was trying to... Yeah force myself to be, it's nothing. It's nothing. It should be in the garbage. And I meant to try to unravel it, to use it for hooking and I couldn't find the end. So I put it on my neck instead. There you go. Hey, but anyway, this stuff is great. They sell it on Etsy, um, uh, felt back metallic. You can get it in any color You can cut it with scissors. You can cut it with your colors, with your cutters. Um, I wouldn't cut it with the Sisex, but you can cut it with your wheel cutters and it hooks great. And I even cut the small, this is just a tip. If you if you ever have a call for metallic, uh, particularly with hanging ornaments and stuff, I, these little strips are threes. I cut the silver in three, and then I did an eight with these and just popped one loop through for each one. So if you get this kit, if you end up getting the tomato pincushion kit, which I thought would be great because so many people sew and so mm. many people love that iconic pincushion. This just fell on me, copper. Um, you will get a selection of all of the colors, strips of all of the colors, so you can choose what color you want your pins to be. So let's see what else happened. Nothing. Do you want to show some of the stuff that you have great ideas for? Sure. Did you want me to? Yes, I want you to. <laughs> and, and let me grab this hoop. So if you remember, my mom was my mom was working. I was over here the other day, and we couldn't get the volume on. Uh, so that problem is solved. My mom was working on her first punch because you had hand surgery last year and everything yeah. was a big pig's breakfast and everything yeah, was difficult. Trying to do stuff. And yeah, she wanted to try hooking and stuff. And we ended up going to the hook in and somebody chopped your strips up into like a number three while I wasn't looking. I know. And then you were completely thrown for a uh, loop. It kind of turned me off. Yeah. Turned you right <laughs> off. So uh, you ended up not doing anything for a a forever yeah. for the whole year but then i was sick and then my hand then you were sick and your hand was no good and there was there was lots was so consistent. last weekend was the first time you started doing picking something up again i almost feel like do... it's not meant to be right but well we can't say that can we we have to stay we have positive. to be positive i know yeah but i i injured my hand slamming the car door against us i forgot about that twist well she did this beautiful this is jossie's oh. this is the back of it this is jossie's river rocks design i'm working that on we, that yep that yeah. we punched we decided you know sometimes when you hook the motion is too much for your hand particularly if there's like arthritis carpal tunnel surgery issues waiting surgery stuff like that um, so she punched this and you're partway through and it went like a breeze. It went great. Yeah. Really great. You run over them with a lint roller. Oh, where do you get that glitter felt? That glitter felt is from Etsy. I got it from the store on Etsy called the felt pod P O D. Um, but yeah, this is working great. So then as soon as you successfully did this that night, you went to pick I up the Chinese food and you slammed your hand between the car door and a metal shelf. And she literally, well, we should have gotten I stitches. Gotten you stitches. should have gone to get stitches. That was I was afraid call. to go to the emergency room and the hospital is too busy. Well, exactly. Everybody's <sighs> sick is at the hospital. So um, it's a bit of a I'm just trying to take line. care of it. And so far it's good. It's really bad. It's, it's really like, bad. Yeah. I mean, oh. she thinks she can see the bone. Let's stop. But yeah, let's uh, it's stop. quite bad. So she won't be working on that anytime soon. But we're looking forward to it in 2021. And yes. my mom, like, I know a lot of you, because Karen said this yesterday during our Zoom call, a lot of you do other things. I know a lot of you are quilters. I know a lot of you are spinners and weavers, but I also know a lot of you are painters and you are a painter. And she, mm. my mom's always been taking classes. Now you do them on Zoom. Yeah. Uh, all kinds of art. And this is a pastel, but yeah. she's going to be turning some of her designs into um, punch needle designs. It's going to be my, yeah, yeah my and own. punching I'm excited them. excited about it. As soon as the hand is better. Yeah, so let's this show this one. one. That's a pastel. This is one of hers. Yeah. 
um, really, now this is going to, can you see Pearl McGowan in this? Look at the background. So you didn't think they'd be able to see the background, but I didn't think so. Pastel yeah. is hard. You do, you do really well with pastel. Yeah, that I is do. my, yeah, least... I enjoy them a lot, but that's like the kind of yarn that changes by yeah. itself or that's multicolored. Yeah. So it gives it a great background. And I, I didn't even know until I looked at that and that's I said, right. oh my God, that's just like one of the yarns you gave me. Exactly. Cause I gave so. her a big. Um, one of the good things about getting into punching is when your daughter dyes wool almost every night, <laughs> you get a lot of the wool that you need. So I brought over That's a true. huge bag of yarn, all kinds of balls, and she feels that she has this exact background color in yeah. there. So it'll be great. You, you, this is an ambitious project. This is basically a pearl McGowan. Right? Mm. I mean, this is going to be, um, she's going to punch the background, and then we're going to have to figure out whether it makes sense. Sometimes with punching, I feel like I can't, even with a fine punch, I can't, I'm not saying one can't, I'm saying I have not successfully yet gotten really fine detail punching that I'm super happy Feel with. Good about, yeah. So sometimes what I do in these situations is I punch the background and then I flip it over for something really filigree like the shadow of a face or an eyeball or something like that. In this case, vines that have uh, a highlight to them. I would be tempted for myself if I were doing this composition to hook the to punch the background the way you will normally yeah. and then flip it over and maybe do the centers of the flowers and the vines with hooking on the front side so you're not looking at the back side anymore. Mm. That's a that's a, just a little yeah, hack a when one. you're just not sure your the detail is coming in. Yeah, that's really good. It'll make a great punch hook project. There's Carol. Carol came on. Uh, you want to show some of your other ones that you're going to do? Did you want to see this? Should I put this She does one? such nice paintings. This is kind of like a Gauguin style and that's going to yeah. make a nice i think that's so it's going to make a good a nice background ride. with the bluish the blue and it green does and have then... a good background so we're going to work i can do some more dyeing so we can get the colors right on these mm. but the point is when you do something creative you can cross it over yeah. into punch needle and rug hooking you could and you should and a lot you of famous people should, have yeah. and we we've talked about a lot of famous people uh in past segments artists who have hooked right that has been one of our most popular segments we talked about emily carr most recently and some of those patterns are now available on my page uh, and next week we're going to be talking about another artist who hooked or at least his wife hooked his work and that is alexander calder who That's is amazing. very well known at least around here i think he's, I think just he's universally yesterday right? very well known i didn't know until yesterday while i was doing internet searches, searches. Um, yeah. that there are a lot of alexander calder hooked rugs and his wife um, hooked a lot of them so that is, that's something we're going to do. I think that's going to be a Monday thing for us. We're going to get back into the crossover between art, art and, and hooking. Because why shouldn't you? It. I'm not sure. It's oh, going I'm going to be careful. What about rug tufting? I'm come. I'll come right to that, Kelly. So this is another one that we're going to try to translate. This is one. This did it's you another do this pastel? One? Yeah, I did. That Holy one. mackerel! You did this one, Mom. The glare yeah. on the glass isn't good. Another pastel that she did, like rocks on the beach, is very Cape Coddy. Um, yeah, we can do this as hooking. We can definitely do I that as so. hooking. Yeah. We can. Oh, it's going to be so uh, mild and pretty. Funny. Yeah, it's going to be a quiet one, but I think it'll be pretty. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be a quiet one. So Kelly just asked a question about tufting. Um, tufting is tufting refers to the pile of the rug that you're doing. So we're whether we're punch needling or rug hooking, we're, we're talking about rug making, and certainly like a carpet tufter or a tufting gun doing any kind of tufting also refers to making something with a pile, usually a carpet, but I think for most of us, we don't make carpets. We make wall art, certainly you can make carpets. So something, if we're talking about like um, how to use a, a tufting gun, that will be a to be continued because I do have my tufting gun and that is a 2021 project for sure because I'm building a giant frame to support that kind of vertical uh, ferocity wow. of this uh, tufting gun. But basically if you are using a tufting gun or if you are using like an old time 1970s in the seventies, there's a lot on eBay of tufting guns, the small ones that look more like the shuttle punches, d -d 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 more like those. Um, and what you're getting with a tufting gun is something that you can make a rug with a low or high pile, but it will be a clipped pile. So if you are hooking, you're pulling up loops if you're doing something that refers to a tufted surface, then you have either clipped hoops or you are using uh, a different kind of technique, like think of latch hook, where you're pulling up the ends, not the loop. The loop is in the back and you're pulling up the ends. With hooking, you're pulling up the loop and well, the ends aren't on the back, they're on the front. But you see what I mean? It's back to forward or front to back. So tufting refers to when the loops are coming up and you're either clipping your loops to give you an all cut surface, meaning pile, 
or it's more like a latch rug, which we sometimes look at, which are also beautiful and should not be dismissed as crafty because they can be super artful. You're pulling those up for a tufted finish. Now, oh good, your tufting gun is coming. That's great. I'm gonna warn you, Kelly, and I know a lot of people know this. I was very late to the tufting gun game. I got the loop gun because you can get the, um, like the tufted cut pile. So then you have a latch hook finish with the ends up or you can get the loop pile. So I got the loop pile because my intention is to use it like a punch gun. You can control the speed, but even on the smallest speed, it goes quite fast and it can get away from you. And unless you're doing large abst abstracts or abstracts, I think of Crystal when I think of this, because Crystal always does, um, and given Campbell, she posts a lot on our page, does very um, simple lined punch projects. And this would be great with um, with the gun. But for me, it goes even on slowest quite fast. So I will be demonstrating the gun hopefully in the next week or at the most two, as soon as that frame is finished in the new space. And then I would be looking to flip it and get detail the way I just described by hooking the detail in the end. Because with that gun, you will never get detail. You can't slow down to the extent where you could get great detail. But you can get your background in fast. And that is a nice feeling to get that much done, right? That would be a great feeling. So did somebody ask another question? Run over textures with a lint roller to get rid of threads. Yeah, no, that's a great idea, Liz, to run over with a lint roller. Sometimes they're completely attached and tangled like back into the backing cloth. And then I do a bit of clipping, but it's good to, um, oh, it's good to do lint roller always. Kelly says um, she is collecting abstracts from the 40s and 50s. Oh, oh now that is good. You know, there's, there's so much to be said. And when we get to the Alexander Calder segment, on Monday, um, we'll certainly be looking at abstracts and shapes. And you, you also should remember for yourselves when you're planning your designs, if you're trying to make a transition between fine art and hooking or rug making of any kind, um, think about, you know, think about people who are not in the public domain whose work you can use, right? People who have been dead for more than a hundred years. You've seen a lot of Van Gogh rugs and there's a reason for that. It's okay to use his images because he's been dead for over a hundred years and they're copyright free. Now, not so for Alexander Calder, right? Because we're still seeing his work in the fifties and sixties, 1950s and 1960s. So that won't help with mid-century modern. But when you think about other artists who have been um, sort of brutalists or cubists, um, sort of Matisse type artists who are very shape driven or have crossed into other crafts like paper cutting. I'm thinking of Matisse, of course, Chagall type stuff, very shape driven stuff will work great for hooking and punching and will work great with um, any kind of a gun that we're talking about, these high powered guns that plug in because you can get a lot of coverage very, very quickly. And of course you become refined at it sooner rather than later. It's not like a machine gun that just, you know, it is the first time, but it's quickly not. So all of that will be fun to talk about. And it will be fun, I think, to bring a 20th century artist like Calder mm. in at the beginning of the week next week because um, he is so he is so well known and he is so iconic. Not everybody knows the name, but I think you'll know the work. Um, and it's so great to think about that style. Again, he is under copyright because he's he's 20th century. But to think about that style and just sketching, sitting, sketching, taking some time for yourself and coming up with some very simple compositions that are shape driven that you can translate into very easy projects, particularly if you are a beginner. Uh, currently a machine. Okay, so Ke Kelly is a machine um, knitter and rigid head of loom. Okay, so you, Kelly, you're gonna have no problem. You can do a video and then send it to me and show me how to do it because you're gonna be way better at it quicker. You've already got like the machine part of it down. Donna says, why wouldn't you hook the detail first and then flip it and punch the background? You could easily do that. You could certainly do that. I always do the opposite, but it's just a personal choice. Um, some people like to do the fine detail first. Some people do it last. I'm a do it last person for sure. Uh, and there's no right way. I mean, people will tell you there's a right way and a wrong way, but there's no right way and wrong way. I prefer to do the detail last. Everything, once it's in its place, it's placed, then I can fool with that little crescent of color or whatever that's driving me crazy. I can fool with it at that point. And I feel for myself, like when the detail goes in last, I have a complete picture of the rest of it. And that little bit of detail is the only thing that's outstanding in my mind, uh, niggling away. And I like to leave it to last because if I do it first, it could be that the colors evolve differently than I planned or I change things out. And then that little bit that I've done so perfectly, I end up removing anyway because it no longer gels with what 
I have evolved. So it really depends on how you work. It's like the people who say like, do I start in the middle or do I start on the border? Is it like a puzzle? Do you put the edges together first? It, it's what people will tell you there's a right way and a wrong way. But I always say it's not like needlepoint. If you do it in a different order, you're not going to get a diagonal stretch. You're just going to get one part done quicker than the other. And it will only depend on you uh, what part you want to get done sooner rather than later. We are already out of holy mackerel. But you know what? Let me just do this real quick. See how it goes. Don't I it go fast? So fast? I didn't even get to have a sip of my thing. Um, <laughs> eggnog time, right? It's 12 o'clock. It's oh, definitely yeah. time to have some eggnog. Um, so I want to get back to Waldboro and I want to finish it off because um, I want to show you some pictures and books and I want to do a proper book review of the rug hooking Waldboro book, Waldboro book that I had. Although it's mostly a modern book showing you modern examples. It gives you the sort of German um, population of Waldboro history, the old German church in Waldboro, Maine. Uh, we're talking about Lincoln County, Maine, where this whole Waldboro movement started. And if you weren't tuned in before, it is a, it is a, a very localized sort of trend that popped up and became a very high form of rug making using um, a sculptured pile doing pulling your loops through very densely like pom-pom dense and then uh, using a technique that was called hoving to trim the edges the top to make things look rounded floral you know leaves rounded very fat and round and sculptured and Waldoboro rugs are very prestigious very sought after particularly with provenance um, and they are, or the original antique ones generate from this area. The rug hooking book that I'll show you pictures of and review at the beginning of Monday will show you um, examples of modern Walderboro, which is also fantastic. You can't take it anywhere new. It is hooking with a sculptured surface. It is a very intricate pile, something to practice and something to get used to. Uh, but you can't take it anywhere new. It is still hooking, but with this sort of new aspect, this new layer of difficulty in practice that will be hoving the surface of it. But one of the things I mentioned in the last thing I'm going to show today, because we're going to get going on our errands and, and get into that Christmas Eve mode. Um, one of the things I talked about was doing Walderboro, doing the Walderboro technique of pulling through lots and lots and lots of yarn and then sculpting it on top does not have to be done only in a rug context. You can do Walderboro style hooking on anything. And I'm going to show you an example of it on like, what would you call this material? Like not cotton duck, but, um, Ooh. Cotton twill. This is probably like a South American. I'm going to unroll it example. Um, but the classic example of doing Walderboro when you are not doing the entire rug and you're just doing a raised effect with height on something else. I'll show you the whole thing. But this is obviously a raised effect, right? Um, you can do it straight onto backing and you just play with your backing, figure it out. It works on denim, it works on cotton, it works on linen, it works on most things. And you will see early examples, 18th century, 19th century examples of Walderboro not in a rug context on a plain backing. And in those cases, it's called feather tufting. So this is officially, although this is a bit of an ethnic example, I found this at an antique store for like $10. It's a giant um, sort of banner. I can show you this again on, we can start with this on Monday, but you can see there's a lot of color. There's a lot of texture. It has all been um, punched on the back. You see little rows and stuff, but I just want to show you how fat and fluffy it can be. It's like a little pom-pom and it's worked on this stiff cotton background. Um, this image of birds. I mean, very pretty. It does have a bit, it is a bit of an ethnic looking thing, but it does also have a real Art Nouveau feel to it. Sorry, art, well, more art, yeah, Art Nouveau than Art Deco. But I thought it was exceptionally pretty for what it cost. Mm. And you can see the person tried really hard to get multicolors going in there. The things you find at antique stores for under $20, I'll tell you, get going, right? And right after the holidays, they're all going to have sales. But you can attempt your Walderboro right on a hoop, Mm -hmm. on a backing that you already like, and you just leave it. You don't have to hook the whole thing and turn it into the, the work of a lifetime. You just hook it and practice doing something like this on a backing that you like and see how it goes. Just see how it goes. But anyway, that's one of the many possibilities. Do you love that, Doreen? Off subject. Mm -hmm. Oh, Doreen, Doreen got her shingle shot yesterday. Thank you for saying that. It's worth reminding people because, you know, I just had shingles recently, uh, and it is not fun 
and I caught it the first day and I was, I was very, very lucky that they gave me the medicine and it, it was as quick as it was. There were some moments of zings that were pretty agonizing. Um, yeah, super disruptive, Just but get ago. your shingles shots. I'm in my forties still, and they don't even offer it when you're this young. You have to be a real hot mess, really stressed to get shingles in your forties. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Get your shots. But you know what? Today, be careful. Go out. If you're going out, you know, obviously do your masks and your distancing because it's going to be a busy day for people. Mm -hmm. It's an exciting time of year and it can be a depressing time of year. So let's stay together and keep each other up. I will be here for you tomorrow night. We will be here with bingo, assuming we have power Sorry. and we are going to have some fun times. Even if there's not a lot on your calendar today and tomorrow, we are going to have some fun times. So get going on your sketching, get going with your thoughts and your inspiration, pour a little eggnog, get all set up for 2021 because it's going to be your year for sure, right? It's going to be your year. Oh, it's got to be. It's got to be. <laughs> All right. Hey, I will see you. Can you see the back of that piece? Sure. Yeah, I love the back. Yeah. Because the red shows through. So you see like the winding around the little flower leaves in the... So you can see it's punch because you can see the trails. You know what That's I mean? Pretty. And you can see the ups and the downs of punch. But yeah, but this this is front and back. So this is how it will come out. So pretty. Very, very, very dense. And they have certainly, this is a clipped, Kelly, this is a clipped surface. So this is uh, this is like a cut pile. So if you've got the carpet pile gun, you're looking at a clipped surface like this. This is not a looped surface. You could do this looped, but this one happens to be clipped. Uh, and of course, Walderboro is always clipped. 100% of the time, Walderboro is clipped. So there we go. Merry Christmas to you who are celebrating. Mm -hmm. um, Everybody have a great night. Enjoy. And we will see you tomorrow night for a, for a big blowout. Yes. Have a great day, everybody. Be careful. <laughs> we got there in the end. We did it. <laughs>